Hello my soccer universe, we had two very different days at the AFCON uh, this time around and boy the first day was kind of yeah everything went not saying like expected but the games were not really that exciting uh, because it was pretty clear who's gonna win it in, in the end and then Saturday happened and it was just pure madness, pure madness. Uh, first Mali probably, and Mali to me is turning into kind of the Spain of Africa, you know, when, uh, and this is pre-2008 Spain, when Spain was always flattering to the sea, always good and always there, but never going the whole di distance. Same thing ha happening here. I mean, uh, they have so many talents. They were a good team. They dominated the Cote d'Ivoire the entire time of that match and somehow managed to lose that one even playing with a man more for most of the, of the time. So that's a major story uh, in uh, this video. But also South Africa kind of pulled one out of, out of the hat. If you watch the game, you would think that Cape Verde would have deserved it more. However, they don't have a goalkeeper who saves four penalties. Four penalties and all good saves. This was really, really amazing stuff that we saw, I saw, I actually, um, like the Asian Cup here, saw three out of the four games, so I uh, was quite happy about that. Uh, maybe the only thing that makes me sad is that you definitely see it's kind of sparse already. I only want to keep the teams that uh, made it at least to the quarters and oh uh, yeah, three left. A little detail, I ordered two African shirts and I hope that they will arrive at least on Saturday. Unfortunately, they're letting me down on that part, but hey, so be it. Uh, you will see them soon enough. Uh, let's get into uh, the games. I mean, Nigeria against the goal is the one game that I could not see. Uh, and let's be honest, I mean, it was always been Nigeria are now the big favorites. Uh, if you look, if you look at it, yes, the Colt Kokoti have home field advantage. But if I just look at the players and, and the squad, and also uh, the cloud around the round team, for me, Nigeria are now the favorites to win it all. And uh, have it Adam or Lukman? Actually, I, I would argue the player of the tournament. He keeps on scoring, uh, and actually looking quite good doing doing so. Uh, and this is despite having Victor Osimen, who is not really firing. But this was comprehensive for Nigeria, not really getting in trouble. Yes, Angola had one or uh, two chances here, here and there, but overall, I think Nigeria fully deserved to uh, move on. Yes, if Ozeman would score, that would make it even better. But I also have to give huge uh, credit to uh, the defense, who have now not conceded uh, in two straight knockout ties. That no one would have expected so far. So for me, my Nigeria looking good. Um, I also expected the DRC to be not too bad as well. Uh, and they played overall better in the first half than Guinea. However, Guinea get uh, a penalty that Bio converts in the 20, 20 minute, but it was I mean it was just a tad better. But Mbemba then pulls uh, the DRC back, and in the second half it was all DRC. It was all the, the uh, Congo uh, playing out. Uh, they earn also a penalty that Visa pulls away, and then uh, Mazuaku in the 82nd 80, 80 kills off, off of the game. At that point, Guinea really had not much in play and, and, and anymore. So it was a relatively good performance. I think this is the first seven final since I want to say 98, but uh, nah, I think they they they, they made him soon. But I, I I remember the 98 version of the DRC make making the far. But you know, uh, the Congo is also a team that kind of belongs among the bigger nations. They are just not quite as big as they probably should be, but they are scraped. I think they are definitely best of the rest, in my um, opinion. And since they're playing in blue, is a jersey that I really would like to add here because you know my African jersey is all green, red, and yellow with a little bit orange and white thrown in there as well. So these were the Friday games. <laughs> Saturday, I mean, I already said it. Mali should never have lost this match. Mali were the better team. They put the cultivar on the back of the uh, the heels. However, you need to take your chances. Uh, I mean, this was, if it was a boxing fight uh, by points, they would have 
it would have been a knockout for the Kotivar. Ko 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 Especially if the first half of Mali one attack after that. They should have got the penalty or, 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 or and it was weirdly enough not given. Then they get a penalty with, with Kosunu uh, basically falling over himself to um, foul Traoré. Sees his penalty saved. Sees his penalty saved. And uh, Kosunu had uh, the first half from hell because uh, you know he almost had given away one penalty, he gave another away another one, and then he he trips up another player and he's sent off with a yellow red in the 43rd minute. And at that point, I think no one, I mean, the way that the game had been going, no one really thought that the Call de War can win this one. The only thing that was good, good, good for them is that uh, Mali had not scored yet, and this was always the und undoing. However, uh, while well, the, the Cote d'Ivoire kept it relatively tight and still brought on, I mean, Sebastian Alea and um you know, to add a little bit oomph up front, um, when Nene scores the 1 0, brilliant shot from far out. It also has, as we said, I mean, the game was done. The game was literally done. How they got the equalizer through Adingra, I mean, it was a desperation cross in that bounces of two Mali defenders ping pong in front of Adingra, who has an M M M in front of him, and it goes to overtime. Absolutely unbelievable stuff. In overtime, uh, Sebastian Alea, I think in the 9 and 15, even hit with a head at the crossbar, but then, especially in the last 15 minutes, Mali were pressing for that goal. I mean, the Cote d'Ivoire were just staying in the back. Uh, hold, hold, hold on, but it wasn't happening. What's what, what's even worse is they uh, uh, they get a free kick deep in the uh, in stoppage time, and the ball comes somehow to Fofana, who takes a shot, and Diakite with his heel deflects it into the net, and out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere, the Cote d'Ivoire win this game. Uh, then there was some ugly scenes afterwards. I mean, the I think it was an Egyptian re uh, referee. Seems like a head head master that no one takes a little serious to be honest. Uh, he was swarmed by the Mali players because he didn't let them take the final corner, and they were really really upset with him. I don't know exactly what happened more. Maybe they, they were more 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 grief, but uh, absolutely mad game, absolutely mad game this one. And so the hosts move on, the hosts move on, and with the luck that they're having, I mean, already late. I think that is against Senegal they held their own. But Mali outplayed them for most, most of the time. I mean, it's not a vintage performance uh, from the Cote d'Ivoire. But they move on. They move on and play the Congo. And then we had again two outsiders, Cape Verde against South Africa. Another steal. Because over the most of the game, Cape Verde were the better team. Uh, South Africa was mostly defensively sound. Uh, but Cape Verde, you could see, are the, have the better players, play more excitingly. Uh, but uh, failed to create many, many chances. I mean, the game in the first half was kind of a stalemate. In the second half, especially for the first half, half hour, it was really open uh, where both teams tried to get it and their Cape Verde was better. Uh, then got a little bit more cautious egg again. However, there was a huge chance for the Cape Verde Allies that was saved uh, just over the Croc Rogers by 91st minute. Um, so at that point, you would, you would say, actually, Cape Verde would have deserved it. But uh, early in overtime, South Africa also uh, forced a double save uh, from uh, Wozinia. And at that point, I felt, hmm, that's interesting. In overtime, suddenly it was uh, that South Africa was probably a teeny bit better. But it felt the whole time, yeah, this is going to penalties. And the penalties it went, and what an epic penalty shooter that that, that was. Uh, I cannot remember. I mean, I think the 2003 Champions League final was close to that, uh, which where, 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 where there were many saves as well. But among the first six penalties, only Moquenas went in. Bebe misses, Semedo misses, Duarte misses. Uh, and not only misses, all are saved by Williams and all going to the right side where he saves them. Uh, <laughs> which was already, but uh, Le Paza pulls it over the, the bar in Modi, I think it was an all, all saved by Wozinia. So uh, you're thinking, you're really feeling for Williams. He saves three penalties already and his comrades cannot convert. Teixeira then equalizes. Teixeira 
uh, from Sturm Graz to Lusnau, place now in Ger Germany, converts by going to his right, the uh, Williams' uh, left side. And I guess he tipped off Willi Willi Williams. Then Mala converts, puts South Africa with the fourth penalty in front again. And then Andrade steps up, shoots to the left, off Williams, and Williams saves one more penalty. All good saves. South Africa move on. Not as much of a steal as the Cordoba, but a steal it was. Uh, one has to be honest because I think KK Verde were the better team. But South Africa also a uh, first semi final in a long, 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 long time. We thought that South Africa is kind of a minnow now. It's great to see them back in the semi final, I have to say. And there they will take on the favorites, Nigeria. Overall, I gotta say, if I look uh, at the bracket, uh, Nigeria. And the Cordoba are the favorites. I think the Congo can give them, can give the Cordoba a little bit of run for their money, but I, you know, we'll see. Uh, just the feeling, I just think that Nigeria will have enough for, to beat South Africa. Uh, the final that's projected at the moment is Nigeria against Cordoba. As I said, I wouldn't be surprised if the Congo make may mix it, but I think Nigeria or Cordoba would be a showstopper for sure. Let's see uh, if Nigeria can pull it off uh, and, you know, if the cold Kokotiva make another escape. Unbelievable stuff. Unbelievable, unbelievable stuff. Um, unlike the Asian Cup, these uh, semifinals are actually played on Wednesday and Thursday. Asian Cup plays Tuesday and Wednesday. So Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, so you will get a review video from me on uh, Friday morning, most likely. Or I'll, I'll, I'll shoot it Friday morning and then we'll take it from there. Any case, who do you think will win? Uh, as I said, Nigeria looks good. The DRC, probably. Probably, but let's see. Uh, the cold Cotiva are just they're even worse than South Korea, if you ask, ask me the way they pull out miracles for, for, for that. But it would also be nice to see them in the final because it wouldn't that even make for a great atmosphere. But yeah, all the same. Any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more. Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!